All right. I hereby, I hereby call the order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. The time is 631 p.m. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting, January 29th, 2024. And motion we approve the minutes of January 29th. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes from January 29th, 2024. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing yeah. yeah. All right. So our first order of business will be to appoint a new police officer. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So, as you remember, maybe remember, one of our full time officers left to work for the town of Shelburne. Shortly afterwards, he, we began to receive the uh, applicable. The interview committee, which was comprised of our full time officers, received 18 applications for the full time position. And they ended up having uh, interviews with six of the candidates. Mr. Banis was one of the six interviewed. He has formerly worked for uh, three years for the Hampshire County Sheriff's Department. He currently works part time for the Hatfield and Waitley Police Departments. He holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and has recently completed the 40 hour CIT TTAP training, which is the crisis intervention team training that was sent to the whole. Uh, he did that in December. In the short time that I've known him, He's is very professional, diligent, ambitious, inquisitive, and community oriented. Uh, we believe that he would be a great fit within the department, and so therefore, it is my recommendation today that the select board uh, appoint Kevin Arbanus the full time officer of the Sunderland Police Department. I bought him along today. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Crystal, any questions for? No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm fine. I make a motion we appoint Kevin Danis as a full time police full time press full time police officer. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, you want Thursday. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Yeah. Set. Are you ready? Nice and quick. Yeah. How are we on the uh, four inch finance? We are still one short. Okay. <laughs> All right. In that case, we will move on to our first budget presentation of the evening. Uh, Treasurer Becker. Hi. All on you. No pressure. Okay. Well, what would you guys like to ask me? Yeah. Any questions? Um, I have a great one. Maybe. Well, tell us what the big one is. Yeah. What? What is it? Health insurance. Well, health insurance is definitely a thing. Yeah. Um, in terms of the your, your first page of your your budget here, um, postage understand it's going up. Nothing we can do about that, obviously. Correct. Yep. Um, the mileage due from school. Yep. Um, do you mind explaining what that line item is? I'm just. Yep. Fine. For schooling. Uh, at UMass, when I go when I go in there mm -hmm. um, for treasurer school, okay. it's in August. Gotcha. Okay. All righty. Beautiful. Um, anything else for the rest of the board on this first page that has the high level stuff? Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So health insurance looks like eight percent is the number this year. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, we just got confirmation on that. Okay. And those those numbers that you're seeing there are hard because I. Figured in eight percent, and okay. then, as you see, and then there's a couple uh, family members, uh, family plans built in mm -hmm. just for you know possible, you know, possible changes, yeah. new hires, yeah. etc. Yeah. Exactly. So we're looking at about what 30, 20 ish more from the last year. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. But we'll see the four point nine. What's the difference between the four point nine and the eight? You said eight percent increase. Yeah, um, down here the bottom says eight yeah. percent increase. Yeah. Oh, so so also that incorporates that. Okay, I got yeah. you. Good. Thanks. Yeah. That is what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would I like to be zero percent? Of course it would. But yeah. that's not possible. Crazy. Oh, I didn't have any other questions on the rest of it. I yeah. looked look good to me. Anything yeah. you guys have more? Real quick, um, as far as debt, 
there's only two things that we're paying off, which is um, one point in North Main, which is using CPA funds, and then the fire truck. Yeah. Um, everything else is paid off. And the one point in North Main reports that last payment is happening next November or October? Yeah, that's October. Wonderful. Okay. Um, the old path, I don't know if you take a look at that, because that kind of jumped a little bit this week's the year that they do um, a study on old path. So that's why it, it, the city increase there. You mean the county retirement? That's your best? No, old path. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, on the back. Yep. I'm doing every, every, uh, every other year so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And to clarify, that that is the OPEC study. It's not how much we're putting into our OPEC. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's every other year. Yeah. Um, the postage was a little bit late, not inflated, but went up a little bit just because. Um, yeah, and the rates, why not? Exactly. So. Well, this is also going to be a particularly busy year in terms of elections and whatnot, so right. it makes sense that you have to post it to break yourself and go up that much. The amount we're going to use is going to... Right. Okay. Yeah, there'll be a lot. There. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. That was good to me. <laughs> Anything else before we... uh? Move on to the next. Yeah, I have one question. Just uh, how does the county retirement assessment? You just get a number from them and say what it is, and that's all it is. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And you try to, we do pay it off. Yeah. One one fell swoop because you you get a discount. Oh, I see. Okay, good. All right. So we just do do one payment instead of two. Pay it, pay it right up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was just gonna say the uh, finance committee has a quorum. Okay. <laughs> not, not um, so we haven't discussed it. Um, so I move that Joe Elias joins the finance committee. Any second? You have to say all in favor. Yeah, all in favor. Is uh, Linda's on the phone. Okay, I was going to say I just saw her email. Um, I, I, Linda, can you hear us? You can hear us, but you can't see us. Can you can you say I? We can't hear you. <laughs> or give us a thumbs up or something. <laughs> yeah. Um do I try and call back in, Linda? I can hear her. Oh, there we go. Hi. Hi. Right. All right. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Three nothing. All righty. I will reach out to Joe. Thank Perfect. You. Excellent. All right. Thank you. All right, so I think. We're good. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. No problem, um, guys. Try to, try to keep these moving unless you have some big questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No Alrighty. Um, next up, we have uh, Georgia Highway. I see uh, we've got a big increase in the overtime, um, which is related to weather damage, uh, preparing for more range events and whatnot. Yeah, due to all the unforeseen windstorms, rainstorms that all the other towns have been getting, mm -hmm. our line item, that, I mean, our overtime line has been like that for a bunch of years now. Mm -hmm. um, just in case, I, because right now, from the storms that we had last summer, I think we only have maybe $800 left in that line item mm -hmm. in total July. Yeah. So I, I figured I'd want to bump it up just in case a little bit. Mm -hmm. You don't lose it. It goes back to you guys anyway. Yep. yep. Um, Try to be realistic about that. What's that? I'd rather be realistic about how much do you need on that. Yeah. You know, rather than just yeah and low and having a big couple of money for it. Yeah. The general expenses. What's what's causing this? Yeah. General expense. Um, so. So general expense that'd be like parts. Yeah, material. So just see cost go up. There, like last year, I think most of the most of the percentages was like like twelve percent on a lot of stuff last year. Okay. Um, the only thing that went down last year was our salt. 
<laughs> that's the only thing. So just just in case, you know, um, there's some more large increases this year for yeah. repairs and and fixes and you know cost of buying catch basin stuff is through the roof now. I mean, yeah. just a, a manhole cover and stuff is like eight hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, and for like four hundred to eight hundred. So yeah, um, things are things are getting out of control with repair stuff. And, so that's just for increases like that. Okay. Probably Thanks. might not even need it all, but it's there and you'll really use it at least. Fuel, that you want $2,500 um, because that has been up and down for the last year or two. So I'm not sure where that's heading or as of right now. So I just want to be sure that we have enough in all our accounts to Keep moving forward and not fall behind on anything. We've been lucky the last few years we haven't had any problems. So, Tree Warden, we went up $600 on that. That covers the, that basically that extra 600 covers the cost of mowing the old dump once a year, hiring somebody to do the slopes and stuff. Oh, shit. General expense for the highway garage, that's for heating oil, uh, cable, Comcast, computer stuff, shop stuff, anything like that, that does for the garage. Now I'm losing on that one, 2023 was $7,700. Then last year, you know, this year is 26. So what was the decrease for? So the way they broke it, so I used to do it in one, one highway garage so and it's i guess it's always okay. been broken up but i've always done one budget so this budget's been separated yeah okay the way it's been in the line the way jeff explained it to me yeah so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay your utilities in it is that what it was yeah it's like utilities and then highway garage now and before it used to be all highway garage and then yeah um, like garage energy used to be separated yeah on like a sub account but they got rid of that I was confused this year going, where'd all my money go? Where's it going? Because I don't know where it is. So, yeah. Looks like the same happened with the, the general and the village funds there. Yeah, they, yeah, so when we had got the new accounts, new accounts separated a few few different things, like my fuel used to be, those all used to be like highway fuel, highway general expense, and uh, those two used to be all combined mm -hmm. and had some accounts underneath them. Um, so those are kind of combined now. Or separated. Okay. Sure. Um, Dan, anything you want to add? No, it's just good. Crystal? Sure. I'm good. Thank you. All right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Bias committee, any questions? Do you all want to hear about the capital projects too? Or do you want to go in? I mean, we're going to talk about them on Thursday at the Capital Planning Committee meeting. So, it would be more of a question for Crystal and Dan if you guys want to have some information about that now. If not, next Monday, I can talk about more about what we talked about on Thursday. I think I can wait until you guys get to the committee. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Good. Wonderful stuff. That's Thursday. Um, I think there's a public comment. Oh, sorry, it's Lauren. Um, I just had a question there about, um, based on what George said, is that an across the board change that um, utilities are going back into department budgets? Instead of the town line item? Uh, uh, it depends on what utilities you're asking about, Lauren. Electricity, no. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Anything else, Lauren? That's it. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Have yourself a good one. You have a great night. You too. All right. Our next uh, presentation is the Slack board presentation. Yeah. Yes. So um, this will hopefully 
reinforce what George was saying. Sort of at the bottom, you'll see I broke out a lot of these sub accounts are actually treated as two accounts. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the purposes of understanding what was expended, I had to put them all back together. Um, so um, aside from salary, um, we're going out to bid for lawn mowing. I expect that to increase um, at least $2,500. Uh, town council, we got a letter from them that their rates are going up. Yeah, so yeah, bump that, that up. Um, town office operations. Everything's getting more expensive. Um, I, you know, I don't know that we're going to need all of it. That's a line we can probably reduce some, but town office supplies and town office operation. I mean, it's everything's getting more expensive yeah. um, and we haven't increased it in a few years right. um as we might discuss later or next week <laughs> i don't know if this is the year to be increasing stuff but um so if we need to go back and, and trim a little there we can certainly do that i think it makes sense to come in and add what, what people think is reasonable and then the budgeting we we do that right. but sorry very good point all right, everything else looks pretty level. Um, except for the contractual updates and those are the three items you already mentioned. Any questions, Dan? The only comment I had then raised it to you earlier is on the on the mowing. Um, <laughs> is there any chance we could throw in there just to see what it would cost if it was all done with electric? Yeah. Maybe it's a big premium and we wouldn't want to do it, but it's figured it might be worth asking. Yep, we can um yeah, when we go out to bid, we can certainly figure out how to yeah. Okay. I mean, do we have enough people or in the area? Are there enough? I, yeah, I have no so idea. So that was my first question. <laughs> um George said. I think he said that there's a company out of Northern Connecticut that does landscaping in the area that's all electric. So there are there are companies that do that. Um, so we'll look into it. I mean, worst case scenario, nobody applies. <laughs> right. So it's sort of the same. Is there a way to do a bid where you say you prefer electric? So that it sends the signal to companies that they should start getting electric. But if we don't, if there's no one, we wouldn't have to bid it again. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that they might get the message that that's what we want, I just just putting it in, yeah. but um, we could certainly talk to them, whoever applies, and say we're interested in you electrifying your fleet. Uh, I did hear about a company out of Northampton that is going to the game, so okay. I'll look it up and see if I can remember. Thank you. I don't have any questions on this. Um, crystal, anything? No, I'm good. Okay. Any questions from finance committee on such one? Anything from anyone on the phone? Alrighty. That ends our budget part of the meeting. Um, next up is the Community Preservation Act grant application. So before we get to that, do you all want to stick around or do you want to adjourn? Um, uh, there are things that come are coming up that we should, are going to have to review. Um, like no, don't I don't next week I'm stuff, right? is the final, like I know we have separate votes on stuff that we let tell me we know. Yep. But is the CPA one of those things? And that won't happen until we have the warrant in front of us and go through it. Um, uh, oh, budget. Um, next week, I'm going to do a budget, a preview of the overall budget and sort of where where I think we okay. stand and sort of revenue and, and expenses and stuff. So okay. that, that was all this week. So from the finance committee, then, you have <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> I just made a motion. So I will second the budget. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning? Say aye. Did you hear it? Can you make a poll? Oh, yeah, I always drive her.
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. All righty. So our last order of new business is the CPA grant application. Yeah, you want to talk about that? I can, yeah, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but I can, I can walk yeah. through. So, so for the Mass Trails grant, is a 20% So we were, we're not scrambling, but we were putting it together quick. So we put it into, and we wrote more than 20% because we, well, one thing, we put it in the CPA grant to cover what the, what the deals we wanted to put into the CPA to cover some of the match. So I went to them last week here today with a request. With a request for twenty five thousand, explain it just so everybody knows. Um, we initially thought it was going to be from basically the Whitney Park and ride to UMass, but the section from UMass to Meadow Street in Amherst is already on the Mass Trails Vision Network map. So we were advised by DOT not to include that piece. So that what we basically applied for is a Mass Trails grant. From just south of Meadow Street, where it comes into the right of way of the state highway, mm -hmm. 116, went all the way through town by Sugar Hill and then to the Whitley Park. So it's basically feasible to decide to look at that, come mm -hmm. up with a, a preferred alignment, talk about all the issues, and to bring it to the next level. So the next step after that would be design. So that's a good advisement, Mass Talk, to do that application. And so with the, with the um, match that we have to have, I thought CPA would be a good place to look. So I brought that. And they're asking to ask for a little bit more information on one of the questions they had was uh, what portion of it is within Sunderland? Did you go to the Deerfield or Wade and Gaskin or Amherst? Because there's little, you know, the small pieces in the other two towns. Yeah. I said I hadn't, but we didn't at this point. But we're just looking because the majority of it is obviously in Sunderland. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the, the thinking is if we get the if we get the CPA match, that, that would be great. And it would be used because we also put in, we had to show hours for what we would do if it was fully a work share kind of thing. We had to put hours in. And so we put hours in. I'm, nervous, I'm a little nervous about just having limited resources. So my thinking here, our thinking is that if we do uh, get the grant, we probably want to set up a committee and see if we can find people who are interested and want to help volunteer to work off those hours rather than depending on top forces. Okay. So that's kind of where we stand. We're, we've asked. We're making sure that we can do that. I think it seems like it makes sense if we'd be able to do that and change some of the names and you know the hours, but make it you know whatever match we need, we'd have to get depending on what we get to see. You don't have any idea what the number of hours would be, do you? We did have we did have a number on there. I forget how many it was. It was it was fair, but we know on the how the amount of money. The grant itself yeah. is like I want to say two thirty, something like two thirty yeah. for the whole thing for the two hundred thirty thousand for the digital study itself. Mm -hmm. And then we put in some, I think we have, we put in 25% of the cover, but then we, we asked that if we get the CPA match, we can reduce those hours. So that's kind of, that's kind of where we are. But uh, that, that was the grant that went in and I'll, we'll respond to them with more information and see where it goes. Yeah. yeah. And I think we had to get it in a little bit timing wise. We had to rush it. Yeah. So, uh, um, apologies for me. Yeah. Just wanted the, the whole select board to be aware of it. And, um, and if we were there, it, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Apologies. I should have, should have thought of you. Well, that the deadline was last week. Yeah. 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 And in general, if you're oh, applying some money for the panel <laughs> for something, yeah. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, can we, can we get a vote? Just a vote to approve the, the CPA the grant application for $25,000 for the piece of work. Sorry. For the mat, to, to get the match for the match. So I motion we approve the CPA grant application for money towards uh, Mass Trails grant. There you go. The Mass <laughs> Trails grant. For $25,000. For $25,000. All right, second. Any discussion? Not hearing any discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for being on top of that. All right. That is it for our new business. Next up under old business, we have an ARPA request for sidewalk crossing indicators. Yes. So um, there are two locations. Well, initially, um, it was identified that the school street 
frothing, um, didn't have any lights, what like flashing lights or anything like that, or two way signs. Um, so talk, George recommended that we get the RRB rapid. I don't know. RRFB. Yeah. We're uh, saying you the rapid flashing beacons. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so that's the push button. They all light up, car stop, you cross, it stops. Uh, and he recommended the same thing for the crosswalk by Cemetery Road and Old Amherst on South Main. So um, he got a quote for about 8000 per unit, um, not including the poles or installation. So, <laughs> for, yeah, for two. Um, so he's asking for 16000 um, And then the poles installation, is that something that his type of project handle? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's a sixteen thousand dollar request for two pairs of these cross indicators. And I would note that the cemetery road one is also on the complete streets grant application. So if we get that, um, we could either you know wait to purchase this or um, put put somewhere else. When we when will we know about them? Yeah. that one? Um, they are still reviewing. I checked in last week, and I think they were saying um, they were hoping by mid March. Okay, so we can approve forward. this, but maybe wait to pull the trigger on that one until right. We we'll hear back about that, and then we'll be able to decide. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I would entertain a motion for the approval of sixteen thousand dollars from ARPA for the sidewalk crossing indicators. So moved to motion to approve sixteen thousand were the final numbers for the two. All right, the units. I second. All right, we motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Not hearing any discussion. Oh. All right. All right, give me a thing. All righty, uh, 23 Plum Tree. Yeah, so I, I've had discussions with Waitley and Deerfield and, and the senior center, and I think that. I think that we're all on the same page, and I just wanted to clarify and make sure that we are all on the same page as well. Um, you know, after the open house, I did not hear a clear, yes, we want to do this. This is a great idea. Um, and so I, I was nervous. I am nervous that I don't think that we will be able to progress enough in the process to be able to convince people who are skeptical in town that this is a good investment. This is how we're going to use the space. Um, you know, this is exactly what it's going to cost. This is what it's going to cost you. And I just think uh, in two months that that's not likely to happen. So I talked to Deerfield and I talked to Waitley and they understood the senior center director as well. Um, obviously, you know, that she wants to move in the seniors want to be there as soon as possible they want a space and that's understandable um but they are working on an alternative space and in the meantime we're going to continue to look for grants and and low um low interest loan opportunities and you know we can always call a special town meeting once we have all our ducks in a row and <laughs> this is the right thing for the town and we can make a strong case for it so that, that's the discussions I've been having with them. They were sort of on the same page. So I just wanted to make sure that that, that no, I mean, is what I, I was hearing from you all as well. I feel like A, we can't get we can't do all our due diligence in the, in the time we have between now and, and time meeting anyways. And even if somehow we were able to, we wouldn't be able to convince people in two months that it's the right decision because people aren't gonna people the, the pressure is gonna be that we haven't had enough time, even if it's even if we were able to make it happen. Um, and also just between all the other things that you and us and all the other departments in town have to do in the next two months, trying to, you know, if, if, if this was June through August, you know, we could probably find two months worth of work to, you know, to be able to make this happen. Uh, it's not going to happen during the middle budget season the way it is. Um, but I, I do, you know, remember that we do have the option of, of calling it a official time meeting or... There is also next year time meeting if we get to that point also. Um, thank you for, for doing that. We appreciate you having those conversations with the other towns and with uh, the senior center. Um, any other discussion on 23 Plum Tree? No, that's a good question. Okay, bring it back. All right. <laughs> um, next up is select board updates. 
I don't believe I have anything this week. I don't so, have anything this week. I'm just happy the Nashville grant went in. So I'll be yeah. all again. <laughs> Excellent. Um, my things are very quick. Like I said, I'm going to try and do the have a you know preliminary budget um, to review next week. Um, yeah, eight percent insurance is going to be tough. Um, the other thing I wanted to just mention is we've been uh, well. We mostly Cindy has been um, looking at alternative phone systems. So we hired Maureen in November, and I think it was late January when we finally got her a phone that she could both call out and receive calls on. So that was frustrating and um, a significant waste of time. And so um, we were looking into it and Verizon um, has a pretty good plan. You can put an app on your phone so it can look like, well, I shouldn't tell you, but I feel like I'm in the office when I'm not. Um, if you, you know, so if people yeah. are traveling or whatever, they don't have to use their personal phones. Um, and what we're thinking about doing, Lauren mentioned electricity. So a few years ago, when the solar was installed, um, previously all, all the departments had been paying their own electricity. And then when, when the solar was installed by the school, the town decided to the town hall is paying for the electricity for the departments. And so we would do something similar for the phones. Right now, each department pays for their phones. This would be $25 per phone per month, no matter what you do with it. So we just figured it would be easier to have everything done in one place, one bill, send it out, um, a single point of contact. So mm -hmm. you know, one of the issues that, that we sometimes run into is we're paying a Comcast bill, the public safety is paying Comcast bill, highway paying Comcast bill. Sometimes they take our check and they apply it to another account. And so this would just eliminate that um, confusion. So we got this conversation. I just wanted to, mm -hmm. are we getting any better of a rubric by having the whole towns? I think, the, I think the cost, no, it would be comparable, uh, but we are getting, free phones like the, the physical phones would all be free okay. um so there's no initial investment it's just a two-year contract um for service okay now what about phones that like work through so one of, one of the so in addition <laughs> and cindy can probably say this in her sleep i think we have 30 33 phones and then in addition, that's desk phones and cordless phones. In addition to that, we're trying to buy an outdoor phone to replace the one at the public safety complex and an LTE phone so that when power um, goes out, they mm. still have a phone at the public safety complex. Yeah. Is that what you were asking? No. Oh, so I was asking more about not even having a physical phone using your computer. Like VoIP teams, something like that. Well, they are they are void phones. Um, I don't know, but but so I don't know about you, but like I don't have a physical phone for work. Mm -hmm. I answer my phone on my computer. I talk on my computer. I dial on my computer. I do everything right through my computer. There is no physical phone. Yeah, I, I use we have all of our phone numbers at my work also are Teams. Right. And so if someone calls, it dials Teams on my computer rings. I also yeah. have Teams on my right. personal phone. Your... It rings also. There's a cost associated with it, but I don't think it's twenty five dollars a month per phone. So it would be worth looking into that. Um <laughs> so... yeah, yeah. And then like for me, if I'm going out of the office and I say, Jeff. Until four o'clock, can you take my calls? I can set it up so that all my calls between noon and four transfer to your phone. Pretty, yeah, I I didn't know that was a possibility. So we could certainly look into you know. So this. it would initially probably require a small amount of hardware. 
right? Because you'd need a, a microphone and a speaker on your computer. Yeah. But, you know, if you have a laptop. The headsets are cheap. Yeah, headsets are $20. Bucks. Correct. No, I yeah. Correct. But, you know, it's an initial small investment. Yeah. Cindy, are you trying to talk? It lights up I around. But... I was kind of. Um, I was just going to add to the other issues that we've had where um, these new phone options would give us way more flexibility with things right now. Whatever phone is assigned to a location, that's the only place we can use it, which has been part of the problem with uh, Maureen's phone. My husband uses Teams. They love it, but they're a totally different organization and the way they operate. I don't know how that would work for us, for some folks, because some don't have laptops and things like that. I know the other problem is whenever we work remote, as everybody would guess, we're using our personal phones and... Um, that's a problem when we're calling folks because then they have our phone numbers unless you do it secretly and then some people won't answer. Yeah, like me, they I know on the have, laptops it's different. No, they wouldn't have your phone number because right. you would download the Teams app and you yep. call through Teams, not your phone. We your have local. Teams already on our laptops, but not everybody uses them just based on the way they um, they do their functions. So. Sometimes if we're having, say, for instance, a department head meeting, everybody might not be where a laptop is. Some departments don't have laptops, like yeah. the fire department. You could use right, but you don't need a laptop. You could do it from a desktop, you could do it from a cell phone, anything. Yep. Yeah, I'm familiar with Teams only because I know my husband uses it all the time. Yeah. And, and that was a, a thing that they picked up during COVID and... That's how they operate all the time now. That's what they use. Right. Yep. So we can investigate um, devices. Telephony. Because we would still need the service and the number of lines. They just wouldn't connect to a phone. They'd connect to the computers. Yeah. Um, can the teams do different locations? Can do different locations, no problem. Okay. Yeah, so like I've got it on my phone yeah, yeah. here, and I just, if I need to make a phone call, yeah. you just go find Teams and dial it in. Right? Yeah, I just go onto the Teams app yeah, yeah. And, and dial it, and the Teams app gives me a phone number. It's not my personal cell phone number. Mm -hmm. So I have like an office number. So when I call that, it's shut. that's the number that displays is that office number. If somebody calls me, they would be calling that number. The one sticky ticket level thing that we just need to make sure is possible is porting the current numbers to teams. Yeah. So right now we have phone numbers for the town. We want those to take phone numbers so that when somebody who's had that in their phone for 10 years calls, they get you, they don't get yeah. you know some other person because the number got back on either. Um, we just want to make sure that we have the ability to do that. I'm pretty sure that capacity exists. Um, I would just want to make sure that would be a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we'd have to port our numbers over to Verizon. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, you can have to port them anyway. So, exactly. So, all right. So, yeah, if you could just um, get some, us that information so we can make an informed decision on that, that would be lovely. Uh, any other comments or updates from you, Jeff? Nope. That's all I have. Lovely. All right. Um, Unless uh, either Jeff or Crystal Long would like to, I think we're going to once again not go into executive session. Anything? I have no need. Okay. So, in that case, um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Yeah. It is 7 10 p.m. <laughs>